What It Do. It's your boy Chaz. Painting today the Great Ape from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. Um, you would think this is actually pretty easy to actually come up with a picture. Like when I was going to model this off of. And believe it or not, it's actually kind of hard. You have a vision of a silverback gorilla. And then you immediately go to King Kong and you go to that underrated but great movie by Peter Jackson where Kong faces the faces the T-Rex. And you start looking for you start like trying to pause the scene where the T-Rex and the and King Kong kind of square off. You can see that's the kind of pose I think right before he attacks, but it's kind of really hard to see. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around how I'm going to do the chest and back and his, uh, his kadunk dunk man, it's a pretty impressive, uh, booty, put a, put a cup on that shelf, but we're going to go ahead and dive into it and, uh, hopefully this works out good. I hope everyone's doing, having a great Sunday. I know I am. Today is Sunday fun day and today we're going to be using colors. We're going to be using black from Vallejo. That's going to be the base coat for on the whole body. Then I'm going to go with, um, when I put in the palette, I'm going to go between either cold gray or heavy blue gray for the chest. I'm going to probably go with, it looks like cold gray because it looks darker than the actual heavy blue gray. Uh, that way I can do his chest, his feet and his hands. And we're going to assume, um, we're going to go with the light. We're going to go with the darker one first. And then we're going to highlight with the light one. Uh, I also brought some lich skin just in case it's lighter than the heavy blue gray and we'll see which one but it looks like heavy blue gray might be the way to go uh, lich skin we might use for definition I think I might actually probably not use lich skin at all then we're gonna use some uh, shadow wash uh, just a black wash to highlight the highlight the fingers the chest that's gonna be kind of tough you can't make a lot of mistakes it looks like in the chest because if you look right here the ridges are not going to be really that deep. So we're going to have to use uh, shadowing effects and highlighting. I think this is going to be a good size brush to really bring out his muscle definition on his chest. We're then going to do the inside of his mouth with rose. We're going to do actually, sorry. We're going to start off with khaki. That will be the inside of his mouth. Then we'll highlight using, we'll wash it actually. With sepia wash then we'll highlight we'll actually highlight with rosy flesh and then we'll do his teeth and his eyes uh, off-white and we might if we have time I might do I might try to put some amber in his eyes because uh, silverback girls actually have yellow in their eyes but we'll see how well I do with everything we'll see how everything goes so if you want to paint with me, uh, that sounds great. And let's get to it. I'm going to start off with black. It's going to do our base coat. Just going to put a little in there. I've already pre shaken these bottles as I was trying to decide on which ones. I'll just dip my brush in water. And this way, I used to not understand that, why people did that. But then I started, I started seeing that it covered better and got in the recesses better. So I started dipping my brush in water and seeing the effects. I'm thinking, oh great, I'm watering it down. Like, wouldn't thicker paint, thicker paint be better? And actually, it's not better. I was really surprised by that. So. Canva is the free tool that makes designing for your business easy. I now the great thing about D and D and miniatures, in my opinion, there is no there is no wrong answer. So if you wanted to go with a brown, a brown great ape, which I didn't say it earlier, that's what we're painting today. This is the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Great Ape. And like everything I do at base coat, I I tend to misjudge how much I'm going to need. Get some water in there. There. See how it's kind of flowing better now? That'll just help thin it out to where 
it won't clump it won't clump up and hide the details because this fur we want to hide the details we don't want to hide the details because we are going to be dry brushing the silver on there are the gray on the back considerably because silverback gorillas their backside looks almost gray more gray than it does actual black so and you see it's kind of turning into a wash maybe over diluted a little bit but that's okay again we're not gonna i'm not an expert here so we're gonna just get on in there and depending on how much you want to actually Depending on how much you actually want to have his belly and his feet, skin showing is up to you. Um, the fur does stop, but I always recommend never, never avoid painting areas you don't want to paint with a different color because that way overlapping is easier. I used to think, okay, I had to stop like right here on the belly. So right there. If you overlap that, that's that's actually better, in my opinion, because that way you don't have a gap between. Let me put a little more black in here. The brush should become a little. That way the color doesn't. The color, there's no primer showing. Now, some people who are way better than me would use like wet blending there because the fur is not going to be perfect. So what they would do is blend the paint when it's wet so the, the gray and the black kind of intermingle. But like I said earlier, I'm not an expert. I actually don't know how this is going to turn out, but we're going to do it together. And again, I like to get all the skin, everything black. That way, when you go to do gray, you won't see any primer lines between the two. Because how many times I've done that to where I have thought, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll avoid this area because I already painted the black. Or I, uh, and then I'll do, do the hands, and sure enough, between the hands, that's uh, going to be gray. And the black fur, I did not get, I had a line of primer showing. Now nature, as my daughter would say, dad, don't make everything perfect. Don't make sym symmetry. Uh, there is a thing to her that's where you, you are too symmetrical. Now me... I think everything should look a certain way, but she is very much a better version of me where she doesn't get scared by if it's going to look good or look right or any of that stuff. She just does. So we're just going to, again, we're going to get all his head and get his mouth too because, believe it or not, gorillas actually do have black lips. A little bit of the peach sticking out or in this case rosy flesh okay Now I'm doing just gonna go back, and get all the pieces I missed. That's the problem when you have black. Is you do miss pieces, but it's easy to see 
because they stick out like a sore thumb. My problem is I have a hard time concentrating, so I always miss where I'm supposed to do certain sections, and I end up not doing that. Let's see, his belly needs a little bit of touch up. think that's good now I'm gonna pause my video to let him dry and go make sure the family's taken care of and I will return very shortly Canva is the free tool that makes designing for your business easy. I use Canva to make social... Alright, and we're back. So you see that I added a little more wash to his chest. I really wanted to pop it out. You see underneath the pecs and then right around the abdomen. We really want to make sure we get a lot of that. But one of the things we didn't, I didn't foresee was when you water down paint too much, it doesn't, it, when, it, when it dries, it contracts. So you see right here, we have a lot of black paint came off the edges when it started drying. Uh, same thing here and same thing in the back. Now, this is not going to be a big deal because... We are going to be dry brushing this and just so you know what dry brushing is now dry brushing is where we're going to put some wet paint on a dry brush we're going to just brush it off like this now you see how it's kind of over paint right there but when you start getting here you start seeing the ridges really pop out that's what dry brushing does and what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush on the butt because remember that's what we plan to do earlier and that's going to really make that fur. You see how that fur really pops out now? So the reason I brought that up, I, I brought the black, the black paint like that. It's just so you can be prepared for it. So if we weren't dry brushing, we'd want to go back and repaint it, do another base coat on there. But you want to be really careful when you 
when you do that, just because if this was like a showpiece or, if, you know, just for your own personal, so your own personal standards, make sure you really try to overwater it down. That was my fault. But great thing about D&D, there is no wrong answers. So again, we're going to go for the, we're going to go right here. And I want, I'm, you notice I'm kind of going against the strands because I want to only, when the dry brush does, is when the paint is up in the bristles, the tip of it's not going to be really that covered. So the bottom of that, where the black is going to be in the base, it's going to stay black. But the top part here, kind of the, the upper part, it's going to be where the paint kind of lives. That is where it's going to catch the high raised, eye, uh, high raised areas. So we had a plan. We want to go right up the back. Now, I don't want to hit the shoulders too much. I just want to go right in the back. See how that is? I just want to go right up this way. I'm going to stay away from those shoulders. Okay. And again, when we go by my daughter, nothing needs to be too ace. Nothing needs to be too symmetrical. Now you see how that silver really is starting. How that gray is really starting to make that black really pop. And that fur comes really alive. Now we had some contracting here. I'll go back and I'll and I'll just hit again with the black paint in a little bit because we had uh, we have white specks kind of coming out. Because I don't want to do the four. I don't want to do the biceps and the triceps. I'm going to stick just predominantly to what we talked about. So let's do his face now. Okay, and his forehead. So. And then now his face. Let's see what that did to his face. I'm really going to make... I really want to make sure... We get that now. I'm just gonna add just a little bit to his tum tum and his crotch area. And again, we talked about his thighs. See, now just a little bit of dry brushing up right here on his tummy. I don't want a lot because I really want to stick to the black. But if you do it just barely, you notice how that gray is starting to kind of you have predominantly black, but you have a little bit of gray here and there. That's that. That's that blending piece we're going for. We want the black and the gray to kind of mix together, but look a little more natural. Then we're going to go for his forearms. Now his forearms are going to be thicker. I really want to get a lot of dry brush on there. Okay. Get a little more. Again, hit them forearms. And I want to leave. I really want to leave his his bicep, triceps. He has black. I really got that forearm. And I want to get just a little more on this forearm. Let's see? A little there, a little there, and I just want a little more on his butt. Sorry, I was doing that off camera. Okay, now now that that's done, we're gonna go back. And now we're going to highlight his hands, his feet, and his chest with gray. So we're going to go with a lighter color gray now. Same way we were just dry brushing with. And we're just going to hit his chest. See how 
We're gonna get rid of. We're gonna cover up all that wash. You want to leave the wash? You want to leave the wash kind of under the muscles alone? We're just highlighting now. And see how that peck is going to come out? This one you want to be just a little bit more careful. You want to be, we want to actually make sure the line is nice and straight. The reason why now with highlighting is if you don't, it'll look kind of janky. Now you can skip this highlight if you like the darker part. That's fine too. I just want his chest to be a little more. A little more lighter. Stay right underneath. One of the things I try to do when I think of when I do the highlights like this, I try to imagine where my light source is going to be. So you guys see I have a light source kind of over here to the side. Yeah, going that, that way. <laughs> going that way. Um, that light source helps me kind of, helps me see and helps me with the lighting of the video. But also, when I see the light shining on the figure, I can see where the shadows are. And I paint around the shadows. designing for your business easy. I use Canva to make social It's going to dry out a little bit. Get a little bit of water in there. Brush. Probably should dry brush that chest. Let's see if dry brushing helps it out. I don't think that dry brush helped it out and I think I'll probably just go back and repaint that pit chest but let's go ahead and dry brush the knuckles and that just kind of goes back to that thing of you can make mistakes in painting and you can fix it with just paint over it we tried something we didn't like it and that's okay again we're not trying to enter any competitions here I, you can tell I'm not ready to enter any kind of competition, <laughs> but I think seeing where I make my mistakes will definitely help you out in deciding what color schemes you like and don't like. I'm just going to hit these toes. And you can see what the, what that does to the toes. See how the wash stays in the cracks and crevices, the recesses. Do a 
can salvage with a little bit of If it grows on me, it grows on me. If it doesn't, doesn't. Not a big deal. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the cold gray here. And actually, no, I'm not. I like the way that face turned out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the mouth now. We're going to highlight the mouth using rosy flesh. Whoops, way too much. That's all right. I'm just gonna redo my point here. All right. And tap in there. And now I'm gonna just hit that tongue. Now the roof of the mouse. I'm really just trying to hit the tops, the pieces that are sticking out. And then I'm going to hit the sides here. And I want to hit just the sides inside and so it just kind of makes it look more natural so the problem a lot of times I see with a lot of figures is they're very very bright red mouths and in nature that doesn't look right okay so we want to make sure it just kind of accent it and you see how the roof of the mouth still has the grooves in there from the shadows and the tongue is still looks like a natural tongue Okay, then now I don't want to really do much to more to that face. I like the way the face turned out. I'm now I'm going to hit the eyes and the nails. So just a little dot on your brush. And I hit that eye with a wide dot. Now, if you're in a shooting, the best way to do eyes is the same way you would do in shooting. Just kind of hold your breath. So as you put your hand, rest your hand up against it. Then ta-da. So you want to hold your breath when you get in there and just kind of hold it. And I recommend just having a little glob on the tip of your on the tip of your actual brush when you do it. Now I'm just gonna do his I'm just doing his little toenails. I think if someone wanted to be a professional model painter, they should take some cosmetology classes on how to paint fingernails and toenails. Probably wouldn't hurt. Alright. Now, the only thing that's going to be visible is nails wise is going to be his thumb. Yep, just the tip of his thumb right there. It's not something you're going to see him be part of, but that's okay. All right, now let's do his teeth. Now his teeth are going to be, since we had that, now see how, since we did the wash and all that stuff, 
on we covered the whole tooth. Now when we do the actual teeth, you see how it looks like gums are holding it? They're not just white little dots sticking out in the middle of nowhere. Stick to how many the bottom teeth. I know I'm really excited about Thor versus Kong, or excuse me, not Thor, Godzilla versus Kong. I've got a three year old boy about to turn four. And he is. Loves him from Godzilla. And when he saw King Kong, he. King Kong is like a, like a third probably favorite to him. But he is a Godzilla fan. So when that comes out in theaters. We'll definitely go watch that. Alright, it's just. Getting his teeth like so. All right. Now, with the white on his eyes, try to get the whole pupil. Because we're going to go in with kind of a black. All right. And with that white base and that black, it's going to look really more, really more uh, prominent. So... I think we are getting close to being done. Um, his base, I'm going to do a heavy ochre and just do a sepia wash with the heavy ochre. What that's going to do is kind of simulate dirt. And then I'm going to probably put some Elmer's glue on it. Just some normal Elmer's school glue. And then I'm going to put on there Arnie Painter's grass. I might just do that for you guys. This is, I think, pretty getting pretty long video, but I think people actually enjoy it when you when you see the whole thing completed. Let's go ahead and do his eye. And my black is dry. That's all right. I've been here for a while. Oh, a little too much black, but that's okay. These these paints aren't really that expensive. I love Vallejo for that. Now. The rule of thumb I use for paint and eyes is find out where they're going to be looking, right? So you have both your pupils focusing on that. So I like to come in at like this down because if you come in at an angle, his eyes won't line up. You want him to look at something. So since he looks like he's coming forward towards you, like, rah, I'm coming in for you. You want to make sure that the pupil... And use the the brush itself as the vision line so you see how if I put that to my eye you can see which way it's going straight so come at it straight the way you want And see, now he looks right. He's looking right at you. Okay, I am happy with that. I think we got a good grade eight. I think his chest actually turned out just fine. I think the dry brushing and the shadow effect worked. I like how his feet did. I like his. I like the way the silver. I like the way the gray came in. I like how there's just hints of it on his shoulders and biceps, triceps. But not much. Uh, I think this form needs a little more. Let me dry brush out. 
Let's just hit that up just a little more. And I think that looks good. I think that really is going to simulate a good grade eight. I think on the table. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do the actual. Let's go get the paint. Well, now I'll do the base some of the time. But other than the base, uh, do what you feel like. Uh, I would use heavy ochre with a sepia wash. Uh, maybe highlight some of the stones on here. Um, I'm definitely going to try something new. I'm going to actually put patches of grass because I'm, I'm up in my game starting something new. So that is a wrap in my opinion. I think this guy turned out great. I hope this was uh, entertaining and instructional for y'all. And thank you for joining my. Thank you for coming to my channel and watching me paint the great ape. And he might be in a campaign where I might do a one shot where bystanders are watching Kong and Godzilla. Maybe I'll pay a T Rex look at Godzilla. So thank you guys very much.